like to invite Sunita Rebecca Cherian, who is the Chief Culture Officer and Senior Vice President, Human Resources with Wipro. Wipro Limited operates in over more than 65 countries and employs more than 2 lakh people in diverse regulatory and labor environments. Sunita's career over two decades has spanned in sales, human capital strategy, board strategy, total reward strategy, workforce transition, mergers and acquisition, organizational design, HR shared services, sustainability, inclusion and diversity. As a human resource leader, she has helped shape the HR strategy and has led change strategies for leadership and leadership and across the talent landscape for various divisions, including a startup unit. Sunita is an electrical and electronics engineer and holds a postgraduate diploma in business administration. She is also a master coach, Hogan specialist, and certified Six Sigma black belt. Can we welcome her with big round of applause, please? Thank you for that introduction. Uh, it's always a pleasure being here, but it's uh, also a struggle to get people back after tea coffee. So, uh, hi. Good, so uh, thank you first and foremost for, to UBS for having invited me over. Um, like I said, it's always a pleasure when you meet with your fellow colleagues, learn from them, know uh, what's happening around you, and try and steal a few of those practices so that you can kind of implement it back when you go back. Uh, he, I, I know that there's 20 minutes, and I've consciously not taken the help of a presentation, so you don't need to take out your cameras. Uh, clicking away uh, at the deck. Uh, I'm just going to speak a few things from the heart because it's about, uh, at least the topic given to me was about the future of the CHROs and what is the emerging role really going to look like. Well, to start with, I, I'll just say that uh, the way I look at it, nothing has changed, right? Uh, uh, maybe a little uh, 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 bit of a question mark there. But at the same time, I would, I would just add on to say nothing has changed and yet everything has changed, right? And now, why do I say this? Uh, simply put, if you look at the role of the CHRO and what the expectation was of any senior leader in the organization, right? The key is how do you make that business successful? How do you ensure that you get the right talent? How do you ensure that you motivate the talent? How do you ensure that you retain the talent? How do you ensure that the growth that you signed up for in the market is kind of sustained? And how do you continue to be a leader in whatever you do? So from that perspective, as far as I look at it, uh, I don't think the role of the CHRO has changed at all, right? Uh, but in the same breath, if I were to just look at the environment today, the context today, I think that's where the entire change has happened. So, and, and looking at the context, uh, you know, there's so much of uncertainty around. Uh, just take the political environment, take the climate change issues, uh, talk about war, talk about recession, talk about, um, you know, the pandemic, what it has done. So I think from a whole lot of perspectives, the way we used to do business, the way we used to manage the workforce has completely gone through a, a, a 180 degree shift. And to me, that is the part that, as an HR professional, you have to really think about in terms of uh, how do you really build the organization to be resilient when it comes to these challenges that one has been facing in the last few years. Now, again, uh, if, I, if I go through uh, a, a few more of what's happened in the last couple of years, uh, clearly, pandemic was not something that one kind of anticipated, right? And yet, the way every single organization responded to the pandemic was in their own little ways. But believe you me, it has made a difference in the lives of the way your employees have perceived you. So were you empathetic? Were you really fast in your thinking in terms of how do you make the employees productive? Were you um, nurturing enough because Data shows, and, and, and by the way, this is data as far as Wipro is also concerned. Look at the number of employees who have actually joined your company fresh, new, in the pandemic. So all these great stories that I can talk about, uh, by the way, I just completed 26 years uh, with Wipro. So the, the thank you. Uh, it, 
of course, it makes me feel very old uh, or rather like an antique piece from the company. But the good part is that things are changing so rapidly. The roles are changing. The challenges are changing. So it's almost like you've kind of joined a new organization with each role change that you've taken. But what I'm trying to say is the native intelligence that I might have had of being a part of this organization for a very long time may have been extremely different compared to somebody who had joined the company during the pandemic. So imagine joining a workforce, not knowing how the office looks like, not knowing what my colleagues look like, not knowing how, what, how can I come across, what kind of interactions is allowed, what kind of conversations happen, because all said and done, one has never continued to be in the company just because of the work that you do, of course, that makes a big difference. But it's also the environment, right? It's also the colleagues that you work with. It's also the friends that you have built over time. And, and if I look at for myself, uh, a lot of my family friends today uh, are clearly friends that I've built, you know, as they were Wiproites, right? So they may have moved on, but the fact is that they continue to remain family friends. So that's the kind of environment that one has grown up with. Now imagine what the last couple of years has done. It's completely turned it on its head because even if I was to say that this is the Wipro culture, where are people really experiencing it, right? So you gotta really think differently because what kind of made you stand apart? So if I were to go back, and by the way, having joined from campus, so I, I understand what it is when you join from campus, starry-eyed, come into a large organization, the kind of leaders you meet, the kind of roles that you play, all of them completely went through the window because there was no kind of a building people came into. The managers were remote. And uh, by the way, the managers needed a lot of help because the way you behave when you have five people around a table is very different when, when you don't see those people in flesh and you've got to really interact with them and get work done uh, while remote. So I think uh, from that perspective, the way I look at it, what has changed uh, for the CHRO, uh, I think a lot of unlearning because what got you here is not going to take you forward. So uh, for a lot of us, it's like, okay, you're part of a successful organization. We've been around for 75 years. We know it all. Uh, sorry. If, if that's the attitude, uh, you will not last for too long. Right? So you've got to keep reinventing. And by that token, I think a few things that kind of uh, accelerated the pace. And, and the biggest one, I would say, would be the, the, the technology, the role that technology has played uh, in terms of the way you interact, in terms of the way you do business. So thanks to Teams, uh, things seemed pretty seamless when we actually shipped all the laptops you know, we, one is we had to procure laptops because we believed that it was okay to have desktops. And suddenly comes a pandemic and you realize that, okay, there's only so much that you can ship to their homes. So the first lot, of course, was to do with shipping of the desktops. And after that, now the policy is that, look, I don't need desktops because uh, I don't think I will have employees coming to the office all five days a week. Now, that's a complete shift because it means that you have to really look at the way you do business, the way you do the costing, the way you do all of it. But what I'm trying to impress upon is until and unless you are swift in your thinking of what needs to change, one. Two, you are open, you are listening. Because believe me, sitting in a corporate office, you don't know it all. Until and unless you have your ears to the ground, until and unless you're open to feedback, until and unless you have a safe space where people can actually come up and give you suggestions, however silly that might look, but the fact that I, I do have an opportunity to voice my concerns, I have an opportunity to speak my mind, that speaks a lot about the kind of changes that you bring in. Now, we were fortunate because, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll probably share a little more on, hence, how did we really tackle it. So to me, the biggest one, if you ask, is on the organization culture. Now, a lot of times people think that, oh, it'll just, you know, it's just there or it'll just flow. Uh, it's what it is. Uh, this is good culture. This is bad culture. 
to me it's not about good or bad it is it is basically every organization if you're not intentional about it will any which way develop a culture of its own right now what you want is to be intentional in the way you develop that culture so that it's something that is there to last now thanks to the foundation that mr premji had built over the last 75 years we can say that we are completely guided by the principles of our spirit of wipro right these are the values that we sign up to these are the behaviors that we we kind of endorse we it's ingrained in us the time we come into the company but think of somebody who was fresh think of somebody who could not go through those workshops right how do you really get them up to speed and believe me what really differentiates one company from the other because everything else can be the same you know you could be the same markets you could have the same business plans you could have the same technology that you're after but finally in a services company it's all about the people it's all about the people and do they really go the extra mile in terms of having that owner mindset and that's what we want to create so what we did is and 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 that's what i said you know uh, probably uh, the timing was perfect because what we realized even before the pandemic was that we had the values but the values were really up there right so i agree that it is easy to understand when you say respect but what does respect really mean when it comes down to behaviors on the ground right so the good part is that people understood what the values were but when we went about speaking to people what we realized is however what somebody experienced on the ground was very different so maybe the experience when you talk to a sunita is very different from the experience when you talk to xyz and what we said is that for the employees to get a consistent experience it is important that the ways of working are clearly articulated so we created something called the five habits now again extremely simple in fact to the point that people came and asked me isn't it silly that you're actually talking about it and i said yeah the the beauty is the simplicity of it because it's all about hammering in the point on respect be it in terms of responsiveness be it in terms of communication be it in terms of the one wipro that we talk about the stewardship that you exhibit be it in terms of the trust that you build uh, the camaraderie that you build so all of this while these words are good people understand it but i think the common understanding and the common ways of working is what was lacking so we articulated through 20 statements to say that these are the behaviors that you will live by and what is expected of any wiprite now that makes it extremely clear because i can now look at person x and say hey but you're not living what we have really articulated now that's a difference because now people are aware that when i say being respectful what really do i mean so we have a lot of for example uh, you know on inclusion and you know wipro has taken very early steps in our inclusion and diversity journey but what i found extremely simple was when we laid out these statements on how to behave so when i say inclusive it's not something in the air as much as letting a leader and employee know that when i say inclusion when i say respect this is what i really mean so that's kind of helped us and and again we went about it by saying that there's no point in talking about the five habits to all 250000 employees because the last thing you want is for some employee to look up and say hey but my supervisor doesn't behave in this fashion so why are you insisting that i behave so so a lot of things that we realize that if you really want to change the culture if you really want to change the fabric you have to start from the top and you have to have leaders at the top truly behaving like role models until and unless they change it's very very difficult to kind of have a movement of this size and order in the rest of the organization so as we speak what we did and by the way it's taken us two and a half years so it's not something that you can kind of tick mark and say okay i've communicated the five habits to everybody now it's done and dusted now let's just move on it's hard because you know the feedback that i've got from the managers is that while it looks simple on paper it's extremely hard to live it every day right because there are days you have your moments 
And, and we're not saying that this is a one strike, two strike. So it's not to say that Sunita didn't respond to an email in 45, uh, 48 hours, so she's out of the company. No. So it's not a one strike, two strike. It is more about Sunita must self-reflect whether this is the behavior that she has signed up to, whether this is a behavior that she wants the rest of the organization to emulate. Now, that makes a huge difference because the onus is now on me as an individual as much as the organization pushing something down my throat. It's about me being a better version of myself. It is about me wanting to change to become a better human being, right? And that's where we notice the entire shift happened because the way people are now signing up to it is of a different order. It is not because somebody told me to as much as I want to do it, right? And I believe that this is good for me. Now, that makes a huge difference because the way I would then interact with my peers would be of a different order, which is something that my team is observing, right? So all those kitsch kitsch would, which would happen otherwise with my peers, the one-upmanship that we wanted to show, I did this, you know, I want to take credit for it, all of that goes through the window because now what my team is emulating is the way I'm going to truly live the five habits. And we've also said, that it is a safe space. So it's not that I can be perfect at all the time. It's not that I may be self-realizing the way I'm coming across all the time. And as a result of which we're saying, it is a safe space where I give you the, the authority, the right to kind of call me out when I don't really live it. So we have beautiful examples of people down the rungs actually calling out leaders saying, hey, but this doesn't really live with the five habits. Now, that's the beauty because, one, I find it completely safe to call that leader out because it's not that, you know, because I called Sunita out tomorrow, you know, my, my pay hike is going to get affected. No. At the same time, it's also putting the onus back on that individual because when someone comes and complains, the first thing I ask them is, so what did you do about it? How are you dealing this with your teams? And believe me, the conversation becomes very, very different. So the way I would approach the emerging role of the CHRO, I, I, I do want to take some questions. So uh, let me keep my uh, spiel a little shorter. So the way I really looked at it is one is culture. And the kind of culture that you build is extremely critical, uh, at least as we move forward. Two is, uh, you know, we have seen it already, the great digital divide. Right? And you have five generations working together in the workforce. The way the, the newer generation quickly adapts to digital is very, very different from the older generation. Right? So how do you really bridge that gap? How do you really make it accessible to all? In fact, digital divide, including people with disabilities. Right? So that's another place where there is a lot of stuff that we're doing so that um, when we call about the environment, we are saying truly making it inclusive for all. And finally, it is about how do you really change the mindset of the leaders? Because a lot of times, all of this, what I said, is completely unthinkable, undoable if the manager does not change, right? So in the new, in the new what is the kind of leadership that you want? What is the kind of uh, leaders that you are creating? So creating that entire breed who would actually take the mantle forward becomes very critical as we move forward. So with that, uh, I thought you know it just gives you a brief on what we've done uh, at Wipro, at the same time giving you a sneak peek in terms of uh, the expectations of the CHRO. But I think the most uh, exciting part of this is questions. So any questions that you may have, yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Rashmi from British Army. We are into medical transcription. Uh, my question is on culture. As you said that leaders at the top behaving as role models. And along with that, you said changing mindset of leaders. So first of all, it is very challenging. It's, it's not easy. Second, I want to ask you, how successful is it at Wipro? Uh, it is a journey, right? So I don't think at any point I can just sit back and say we've, we've arrived. Uh, so we are very conscious about the fact that it is a journey. It will take time. 
if the expectation is that tomorrow the culture of the company or the mindset of the leaders would have changed, I think it's it's not a fair ask. So you've got to be patient, number one. Number two is you've got to keep taking those small dipsticks, those small experiences. What's the surveys telling you? What are people telling you? Are people truly able to open up? So I think these give you pointers to say whether you are making progress on the journey or not. Yeah? Patience for 26 years is with you. I think that is fantastic. I think the theme of the uh, summit today is reimagine, redefine, recreate. Uh, I would like to hear your thoughts specifically around you know, the spam that you've handled at Wipro. How do you rejuvenate your people? I mean, while we take care of all of other things, how do we keep our leaders even within the HR umbrella? How do we rejuvenate them? And is that important? So you're talking about rejuvenate the HR team or in terms of the, yes, the, the, the HR team? So, so good question, you know, because, uh, and especially in today's context, I think things have changed even for the HR. Because, you know, earlier it was okay that you sit in your uh, office space and you just send out those emails and, you know, the policies, processes and things get done. Today, people don't want that from their HR, you know. So clearly, are you authentic? Clearly, are you empathetic? Clearly, are you adaptable? Are you making changes to the feedback that you're getting from the teams? So if you are only going to be the spokesperson of saying, this is policy, do it, believe me, we don't need HR, right? So clearly, the job of the HR has transformed to say, am I an equal partner with the business, number one? And two, am I an employee advocate? Because that's what the employees are seeking from us. So great with that, I know he's staring at me, so I, I dare not stand here for more. <laughs>